the United States still had compelling forms of leverage on the table to shape an outcome that was more conducive and protective of U.S. interests. And we identified four. So the first one was the one-third of Syrian territory that was owned via the U.S. military with its local partner, the Syrian Democratic Forces. Now, this was a light footprint on the U.S. military, only about 1,000 troops over the course of the Syria Study Group's report. And then the tens of thousands of, of forces, both Kurdish and Arab, under the Syrian Democratic Forces. And that one-third of Syria is the resource-rich, it's the economic powerhouse of Syria. So where the hydrocarbons are, which obviously is very much in the public debate here in Washington these days, as well as the agricultural powerhouse. But we argued that it wasn't just about this one third of Syrian territory that the US military and our military presence owned, both to fight ISIS and also as leverage for affecting the, the overall political process for the broader Syrian conflict. There were three other areas of leverage. One is political and diplomatic isolation of the Assad regime. So holding the line on diplomatic isolation, preventing embassies from going back into Damascus. Two is the economic sanctions architecture. So some of this is part of the maximum pressure campaign of the Trump administration on Iran, but there's a whole suite of both executive and congressional sanctions on Syria and Bashar al-Assad, both for human rights abuses in Syria and to the backers of Assad for their activities on support, in support of him in Syria. And three was reconstruction aid. So the United States remains the overall largest single donor of humanitarian aid to Syrians both inside Syria and refugees outside of Syria. And there was some stabilization assistance in the part of Syria that was liberated from ISIS and controlled via the Syrian Democratic Forces in northern eastern Syria. The rest of Syria, though, it is, is rubble. And what the Russians want and what Assad wants is economic reconstruction. Um, and that is something that the United States can basically hold a card on via the international financial institutions and our cooperation with the Europeans. So we argued that absent behavioral changes by the Assad regime, we should hold the line on preventing reconstruction aid and technical expertise from going back into Syria.